Several years ago I made an Arduino project to interface with these arcade LS30 joysticks where in addition to up, down, left, right, you can rotate and there's this 13 pin header for 12 rotary switches and depending where you are one of these wires is going to be grounded and it tells the game board where you are rotated to. Originally I made this ATtiny85 based board so you plug this in the ATtiny is going to monitor these pins and send out a keyboard keystroke over USB. Every time you rotate clockwise, it'll send out a certain character. And when you rotate counterclockwise, it'll send out a different character. So a game emulator can use these joysticks. But this doesn't really work too well these days. This is based on the old DigiStump, DigiSpark project, where you add some hardware and give the ATtiny85 USB emulation support, but apparently that whole project with the Arduino support has been abandoned. The project had been picked up by others, but then USB support itself may not have worked, and it sometimes doesn't work for certain people. So I had to abandon this, and I came up with a replacement project with today's sponsor, PCBWay. While I was doing that, I put two controllers on one board, not just one controller. So now I can plug this one here and plug another one here for two-player support. I have a USB-C connector, although it's only used in regular USB 2 mode. So now, if one joystick rotates, it'll send out certain characters based on the Arduino sketch. If a joystick plugged into the other connector rotates, it'll just send out different keystrokes again. So one USB connector gives you two joystick support. So this board has an Atmega32U4 chip, which is basically what's on an Arduino Pro Micro or a Leonardo, and that chip natively supports USB. So that's the main reason I wanted to use this. So basically this schematic for this board is similar to a Pro Micro board where we have the Atmega32U4 and of course crystal oscillator circuitry, decoupling capacitors, USB header, and whatever support components are generally needed. Then we just have as many GPIO as needed to get two joysticks hooked up. So here's the USB-C connector on those configuration channel pins. We just have the 5.1K pull-down resistors as is standard for connecting this up the way we are. Data plus and minus have 22 ohm series resistors going otherwise straight to the 32U4. I have a resettable fuse on VBUS giving the rest of the board 5 volt power, power LED decoupling capacitors and general parts. And it's not on this schematic, I hand drew this here. I've added TVS diodes on all of these inputs because off-board connections, especially on a long harness and moving parts, people on carpet, you can generate ESD, so trying to protect the pins on the chip. And then we just have all of these pins as inputs on the chip to read the switches. I've grouped these in two banks of six. There's different ways to do this. In other words, each joystick has 12 separate pins that could be 12 separate inputs. So that would be 24 inputs needed. But because we're not really looking specifically at which pin is triggered, we only need to know did we go one direction or the other relatively and then send a keystroke. So if we bundle these into two groups of six, we can still tell which way we are rotating. I've covered that in previous videos. So the first thing we're going to need to do, if this is newly manufactured with a completely blank chip, we want to get a bootloader into the chip so that we can then use it similar to a Pro Micro, just plugging USB in and being able to program the chip with a sketch from the Arduino IDE using the bootloader so that this can show up as a serial port. So the first thing we need to do is use another Arduino, I'm using an UNO, as an ISP programmer, hooking up to the SPI pins on this board so that we are directly programming this chip over SPI. 
So that's a standard procedure to get a bootloader into an Arduino device. So we need a way to power this board, access the reset pin and the SPI pins. And it so happens that the SPI clock and data in and out pins are on this joystick one header on pins one, two, and three. So joystick one is here and then pin one is down here. So one, two, and three are these SPI pins. Pin 13 on both of these is ground. So up here or over here we can use as a ground. Then we just need reset. So I have this two pin header. It's got five volts and reset. So if we want to power this board from USB, we can have a USB cable plugged in and the power light should be on. And then all we need to do is take the Arduino Uno, connect reset and the SPI pins and ground over to the Uno as usual to do SPI programming, but not the five volts to the Uno because we already have five volts. If the board is not plugged into USB, then we do need to power this board from the Uno in this case. So then we would put a jumper between five volts here and the Uno board. When this is all plugged into the Uno ready to program a bootloader, I opened up the sketch that I plan to eventually put in here. But before trying to put the sketch in, the IDE is set up to support the SparkFun Pro Micro board. I'm treating this like a SparkFun Pro Micro board. So up in the tools menu, I choose SparkFun Pro Micro. And because we're burning the bootloader right now, for the serial port, I'm choosing the serial port of the Uno. And we make sure we choose that this is a 5 volt Pro Micro with 16 megahertz clock. And for the programmer, we choose Arduino as ISP. And if everything is hooked up correctly, we choose burn bootloader and it should tell us that we are burning the bootloader and eventually it is successful. If one of the pins is not hooked up correctly, we'll get some sort of error trying to communicate with the chip. Now with the bootloader successfully programmed, this board should show up as a serial port when we plug in USB. Now with this showing up as a serial port, I choose that serial port in the IDE and I make sure the other settings are the same. SparkFun Pro Micro, 5 volt version of the board. And I change the programmer back to the usual AVR Mark II. So it's just going to do regular USB programming on the serial port of this board when it's plugged in. So then everything should work normal. I just click to upload this sketch and it worked. So with the sketch successfully now programmed, and with this board behaving as a USB keyboard, it's time to plug in two rotary joysticks. And I'm going to try this on Mac, Linux, and Windows. So first on this M1 Mac, just with a notepad open, I'm rotating all the way around the joystick in both directions on both joysticks just to make sure all of the key presses are registered. And then just mimicking normal behavior, you're going to be probably rotating back and forth quickly. So making sure it looks relatively clean. We're getting no extra switch contact bounce. These things can be tweaked anyway with the button debounce timing in the sketch if it's not acting proper. So it seems to be working fine on a Mac. Now I'm plugging it into a different computer running Linux. Doing the same thing, going back and forth on both joysticks. It looks like it's registering all of the key presses. And now on Windows 10, when I plug it in, it's recognized. But if it's not recognized, the SparkFun information page talks about how to install drivers for Windows, so I could refer to that if needed. And now I can do the test with both joysticks, and it seems to be properly responding as a USB keyboard on here as well. So hopefully using the Atmega32U4 as a USB keyboard interface will allow this to work more universally across different operating systems, different computers, and not just be hit or miss like the ATtiny85 version.